Why is there so much anime and why is the industry just collapsing on itself? We just got some really interesting new tidbits out of Toshio Okada, who of course is the co-founder and former president of Gainax. He released a video here recently, which thankfully Animator Dormitory has done a translation of, and it really does give us some insight into the industry itself, mainly production committees and how, yes, they are evil. <laughs> About five months ago, I made a video about why animators are getting paid so little. And in that video, I kind of laid out how the whole system works. You have a production committee, which is people with money, and they all come together and they invest into making an anime. And of course, a lot of that investment is to make some money back and then make profits and everybody's happy. But of course, what I highlighted in that video was the aspect of it's a twofold issue. The idea that the production committees themselves want to invest as little as possible so they make as much profit as possible but at the same time, the other issue is that the studios themselves are accepting so little pay in order to have jobs. And so everything that I outlined in that video, I think still applies here. Unfortunately, there is very little whispers coming out of the industry exactly what the issue is. And that's what I think is so great about Toshio Okada doing this video is because it gives us a little bit more insight into an industry that is designed, has an old guard in play that prevents a lot of this information from getting out. Because if you talk about this stuff, you're not gonna do business with people no more. <laughs> and it doesn't seem like Toshio Okada really cares about that. It seems like, at least from this video, he cares about the industry and he wants it to do better. So what does Okada actually highlight here? To put it in a nutshell, it's pretty much committee-induced caps. If you ever look at the credits for an anime, you'll usually see producers. And your assumption there is that each one of those persons essentially invested something into this production of this anime in order to have some sort of shareholding of the anime itself. So each one of them you would assume probably puts in like 10% and everybody gets 10% back. Or you'll have cases like record labels and figure creators that will invest in order to have rights to produce music CDs and have their music on the show itself or to produce figures. But what Okada highlights here is something much more sinister. It's much more impactful and harmful to the industry itself. The way that he sort of explains that you have these big dogs, the ones that are the bigger investors, the ones that are more in control of the project itself, that are basically saying, I'm going to put in 50%, thus I have full control over the project itself. And then they will allow others to invest in the project, but at lower values so that they can always hold the majority ownership of it. It makes sense from a business standpoint, so it doesn't shock me too much. The scary thing about this whole system that he's kind of pointing out is that in order for that major investor to hold ownerships of the entire project while paying very little, they set a cap. So if I'm a company and I want to invest only $500,000 because I, that's all I wanna to put towards it, I'm putting a cap on the overall project of a million dollars. And that's where it gets harmful to the industry itself. By having control over the production committee and forcing yourself to have the majority ownership while paying as little as possible means that every project is not getting funded much. And yes, since there's kind of a hush-hush mentality here, nobody ever speaks up, nothing ever changes, and these anime projects are continuously underinvested. Which gets me to my point that I made in my previous video. Yes, it this puts credit to what I said. These producers are spending very little money and thus the studios are accepting such little money in order to produce it. And if you have such a hush-hush mentality around the project itself, nobody ever pushes back to these production committees and says, no, we need more money. One million dollars is not enough. It takes two to three million dollars. Because again, these people don't want to burn those bridges. They, they don't want to get kicked out of the group. And that's why I'm so adamant about that aspect of it's a two-way road here. Those paying too little and those accepting so little. He even goes even further in talking about how this is kind of a global issue as well. Because these groups within Japan are trying to maintain control, any outside investors are limited on what they can invest into projects. So if a production committee has started and some guy's like, okay, I'm gonna pay 50% and I'm only gonna put 500,000 in, and then you have these outside investors overseas that are willing to pour a lot of money. He was giving an example of a Chinese investor that wants to spend $10 million on a project. That easily pays for one anime project, but they'll purposely limit them because they don't want them to have the majority ownership. Instead, what the production committee's majority owner will do is go, okay, well, we're gonna take your investment of $10 million and we're gonna invest it into 20 different projects. That way, you have a larger investment portfolio. You've been investing in so many more projects. And again, 
the production committee themselves maintain control. And that's what Okada actually is pointing out with why there's so many anime. Why do we suddenly jump up to 60 plus shows in a season? It's because they're taking all that investment from outside and they're spreading it out. And that's why there's so many anime projects happening, but yet the same amount of money is coming in for each of those projects. The industry itself isn't flourishing because we have a lot of new titles. It's because the industry is limiting where those investments go into and spreading it out as much as possible. And yes, we get the problem that we're having with the winter 2023 anime season right now where you have so many anime projects, they all are getting paid very little. It's all being outsourced because there's so little money being pumped into it. And thus you have this collapse that's happening. It gives credit to the idea that it's not a problem with money being added into the industry itself. It's just how much for each project itself. Nothing is really changing besides the fact that they're spreading out the investments, which yes, leads us to beg the industry to stop capping this stuff. And I hope that statements like this will change something. I don't think it will because I believe that Okada has pretty much said similar stuff in the past. I think this is more kind of highlighting as to why there's so many shows, even though the industry itself is hurting. But there is a positive note here. What Okada is essentially trying to highlight here is the necessity for the industry itself to pull itself out from the old guard to allow itself to flourish outside of the typical producers. Anime production needs to rely less on the old guard, to rely less on these people that are pretty much putting these committee induced caps. Groups that can put together 2 million budget without having to rely on those old folks, without having to rely on the old broadcasters, Aniplex, Tokyo MX, whatever group that you're talking about here. Go on to Mal, look up a show, look who's in that production committee, None of them, because those are the ones that are putting the cap on things. And that's the sad thing is because you know this is so deep entrenched into the anime sphere. If you want connections, if you want to broadcast your anime on a certain channel, you have to work with these people. And these are the ones that are putting the cap on the investments to producing the anime. Because again, they want majority ownership. And it's killing anime. It's forcing animation overseas. It's killing the domestic Japanese animator because they can't afford to live anymore. Which yes, is the whole reason why this whole thing was translated by Animator Dormitory. That's exactly what they want to do. They want to kickstart and get investors outside of the anime industry in order to put things together. And But unfortunately, as I've seen over the many years of this being around, it hasn't really produced much. It's because there's not really many people out there with deep pockets that want to get involved with this. And yes, it makes me believe there's probably a little bit of fear there as well. Anybody that wants to invest in alternative projects fear that they're gonna blacklist themselves from the big wigs. Again, the old dogs of the industry. I think the only real kind of positive light that can really come from this is, again, Okada putting some sort of spotlight on this and this possibly encouraging outside investors to not put their money into these multi-project scenarios. To instead, produce their own stuff. Instead, put their money where it needs to go. I think that was probably what happened with Netflix. When Netflix first came into the anime industry, you had a lot of people talking about how, yeah, Netflix came to our door, knocked on it, and put down a suitcase full of money, and we went, what do you want us to make? They were happy about this because there was an outside investor that didn't really wasn't involved with the old guard, didn't talk the same amount of money, wasn't talking about $1 million to make a $3 million plus dollar project. And so they liked it. And they said, yeah, sure, we'll make whatever you want. But I think what happened is eventually Netflix got involved with those old production committees. They started wanting to get into broadcasts on television in Japan. They wanted to get their name out there. And I think what eventually happened, and this is pure speculation, I think Netflix eventually met the old guard, met the old dogs. And the old dog said, we have, a th we have a way of doing things around here. You're putting way too much money in it. We don't wanna match that money in order to get our, our percentage value here. We need you to come down. We need you to invest in multiple projects. We'll give you like six shows to put on your platform if you play by our rules. And I think that's what happened eventually because you started getting word that Netflix wasn't giving as much money as they used to. They were told to chill out. And yes, part of that is Netflix going, oh, so we can pay less and we still get the same product? <laughs> Why are we spending so much money? Cut back. It's probably what happened here. Again, my statements are speculation. Okada here, I believe what he's saying is true. It makes sense, like I said before. You set a cap for how much people invest 
It allows you to have the majority ownership, and thus productions pretty much spend very little money into anime projects. That's why there's so many projects. That's why the industry itself is in such a bad state. And I think it's only gonna get worse. As you see the yen is going down, you're going to have essentially need for more money to make anime productions. And if these committees are setting the cap, they'll never increase that amount. Until, unfortunately, and this is something I've been talking about for quite a bit, the studios start shutting down one by one. There's too many anime. There's so little money going into it. It's all being outsourced. The studios themselves die. And it turns into basically production committees sending out work to China. China sends back the finished product and they put it on broadcast. Something I really, truly don't want to see. Anyhow, hats off to Toshio Okada. Thank you so much for getting the word out there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always, even though it is kind of a depressing video. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below, what do you think of this whole situation? Do you, what do you think is the fix for it? I guess the bigger question. I would love to hear from you guys. Additionally, if you like this video, make sure that like button down below. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you get all my content. I do news reviews, first impressions, top list if it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more and you like what I do here, I don't have a production committee to pay into me. You can support me through Patreon, our tips link, our super thanks, and our membership button down below. I greatly appreciate everybody that supports the channel, and y'all take care.